What's up, brother? In today's video, I'm going to be spending some time talking about what some people in modern relationships may view as a very controversial subject. And that is the relationship between your responsibility as a man and the authority that comes with it. So to start off, what we're going to do is we're going to set the scene by telling you just a quick perspective. Now, I'm sure you're aware of Navy ships, the big, huge ones, destroyers, aircraft carriers in the Navy that go out to sea for months at a time. Well, I'm sure you probably also know that those ships, they have a captain, captain of the ship. He's in charge of the ship. If you've ever actually been on a boat or a ship or a vessel of that type before, you know that the one with the ultimate authority on that vessel is the captain. But why? Why is it that the captain of that ship is the one who has the authority that oversees everyone on it? The reason is because he is also responsible for everything and everyone on that ship. If that ship sinks, the captain is responsible. If someone gets hurt, the captain is responsible. If something bad happens while that ship is out doing whatever it does. The captain is the one who's ultimately responsible. He is the one who's gonna take the blame. This is the basic concept of accountability and ownership that most men should be assuming. Everything in your life is your responsibility. You take ownership of it. You take accountability over it. Now, I want you to think about if that captain had all of the responsibility that came with keeping everyone on that ship safe, making sure it didn't sink, everyone is fed, it's fueled, everything operates the way it should, and everything is going the way it's supposed to. But he has no authority over the people on it. How far do you think that ship would make it? Not very far, right? Because when it comes time, eventually there's going to be a conflict. Something's not going to get done. Someone is not going to do their job. There's going to be a break in the process. And then the captain needs to be able to exercise his authority over the people in that space, but he doesn't have it. And therefore that job doesn't get done. Now, if no one has authority over the things that are happening in that space, no one takes responsibility. This is human nature. I'm sure you've heard it, or maybe you've said it yourself before. That's not my job. Knowing something needs to get done, but you chose not to do it, because it wasn't your responsibility, right? So now that you understand this concept of the authority of a captain over a ship, just like I said a couple of minutes ago, as the man in your home, you have the ultimate degree of responsibility over protecting and providing for your family. Now, men, before I continue forward with this concept, I want you to consider this fact. If you are not a capable protector you're not standing in integrity with your values and being a good man of integrity, responsibility, accountability, work ethic, and leadership, you are not the example, then you cannot reasonably expect a woman to submit to the authority that you have because you're not fulfilling your responsibility, period. The problem that exists in modern relationships is very simple. Men want the authority without the responsibility. And women want the man to be responsible without giving him the authority. This is the problem. This is the exchange. I, as a man, if I make the decision that I'm going to be that leader, be that protector, be that provider, be the one who brings the food to the table, provide the home, take care of the family, and make sure that my wife and children are safe, then what that means is they have to be okay with the authority that I have that comes with it. A good woman will submit to her husband and respect that authority as the leader of that home because she understands the responsibility that he carries to protect and provide for them. She respects that responsibility. She honors that responsibility. And the way that she shows him that she is thankful and lives in a place of gratitude and appreciation for the hard work that he puts forth is giving her submission to his authority, period. Men, you have to honor your wife, your children, protect them, lead them from a place of integrity, love them unequivocally, 
respect them and do your best to preserve their purity. Keep them safe emotionally, mentally, physically. You need to be that safe space for those people in your family. And if you fail to fulfill that responsibility, then you can't reasonably expect your woman to respect your authority. It goes both ways. And so there's a common problem that kind of exists with women today. And I faced this was when I started dating my current wife, who's my second marriage, she had two daughters. That was a very challenging mechanic for me as a man, because when we made the decision that we were going to move forward with a committed relationship, ultimately I was the primary provider was the protector. We chose to live in a place where we had traditional values in our home. And because of that, there was a conflict that exists with her children. Because here's the problem, and this is the problem that a lot of single women and single moms bring to the table with their kids, is they want the stepfather to be responsible for their children, be a male role model for their children, treat their children as their own, bring them into his home and provide for them, but they don't want to give the authority over the child or their father is still in the picture and he's the one who ultimately should have the responsibility and the authority over his child. The problem that happens is the government comes in and they sever that relationship and they say, hey, we are the ones who have ultimate responsibility and authority over the welfare of these children. And the way that we're going to facilitate that is we're going to make this guy pay and dictate how he can spend time with his children. And we're going to empower and reward the woman for leaving him. And so now what happens is the man is paying, but the woman still wants him to exercise his additional responsibilities over the child. As a man, from my perspective, if I'm the father and you want me to exercise my responsibility to be their dad and hold that space, then regardless of how things worked out in our relationship, you also need to be okay with giving me the authority that comes with it. We can't just throw a number on that and call it child support and then sever that relationship. And then in the same perspective, like the challenge that I had with my wife, I basically had the conversation with her and said, I understand that your children are your children and they have their own father. But for as long as they are in my home, they're subject to my rules. For as long as they fall under my scope of responsibility, they fall under my scope of authority. Single moms looking for a partner and a man to step in, you have to realize that if you want him to assume responsibility over you and your children, you need to be okay handing over authority. And also understand that no man is going to step over another man so that he can raise his kids. Quite frankly, the only motivation that I have to raise my children is the fact that they're mine. That's my legacy. That's my blood. That's my name that's going forth. With stepchildren, I don't get that benefit. And the other thing that you have to understand as well is that if we break up, I've now developed this close relationship with another child. I've brought them in and assumed responsibility over them. So not only do I lose you and the relationship and the investment that I've made with you, but I'm also losing your kids. And so gentlemen, as far as this responsibility and authority piece is concerned, you have to be okay creating that boundary. This is my home. I am responsible over everything that happens in it. Therefore, if you want me to carry that burden, that responsibility, you need to be okay with submitting to my authority. And this is a push-pull, an arrangement that happens with a couple when they get married. If this is not something that you can agree to out of the gate, and there's not an alignment in values here, then you need to move on. That's not a relationship you need to be moving forward with. That said, I'm also speaking from a space of, I'm the single sole provider. I'm the one who makes all the money. I'm the one who leads the home. I'm responsible for the protection of the home. All of those things fall under my scope as the man. But let's just say as an example, you have a marriage where the man and the woman 
word, which means you have equal responsibility to fiscally provide for the home. Well, that now means that you have equal authority over managing the finances. If she's the one who's responsible for physically protecting the family, then when you guys are out walking through the Walmart parking lot and a uh, altercation occurs and she's the one who's going to fight, then she's going to be the one who gets the authority over everyone in the family when it comes time for those events to occur. You have to realize that the authority that a man has doesn't come from the fact that he's a man. It comes from the fact that he has the responsibility. And so, ladies, if you're watching this, I want you to think about this. If you were out with your husband or your boyfriend and walking down the street after you went on a date and saw a movie and you were approached by, you know, one or more attackers, would you expect your husband or partner to stand up and defend you? If the answer is yes, and you expect him to assume that responsibility, then you also need to be okay with accepting and submitting to his authority. You can't give him the responsibility without the authority. And men, you need to stop being pussies, simping, and giving them all of the benefit of you carrying the responsibility without them submitting to the authority. That's why they have no respect for you. These are called boundaries. And so a couple of days ago, I recorded a video where I was talking about the roles in the relationship. And one of the things that I said was, if she steps outside of her place, I need to put her back in her place. This is a common problem that happens for women. And men, I think you need to understand this, is you have that responsibility, you have that authority, but that doesn't mean she's not going to test it. And the reason she's going to test it and press those buttons is because she wants to make sure that you're the guy who you say you are. Because the honest truth is, if you can't stand up to her, how are you going to stand up to the bad guy? You're not. If you don't have the wherewithal to draw a boundary for a woman and make sure that she stays in her lane when it comes to the roles and responsibilities in the relationship, then she's not going to respect you. And it's not going to be very much longer before she tries to take your seat at the head of the table. Where what happens, just like I've seen in hundreds of marriages since I've been coaching men, is the woman emasculates the man, puts him into a position where he's ultimately responsible for fiscally and physically providing for the home, but does not get the authority that comes with it she will take that from you if you give it to her and she'll do it in the name of happy wife happy life that is not the right thing to do as a man you never give up that seat of power now getting into the concept of power i want you to realize power by definition is simply your ability to exercise your will over others and authority is simply their acceptance of that power. Now, one of the questions that I got, I believe it was on TikTok, was what gave men the right to be the ones who decide who has basic human rights, aka over women? Well, I'll tell you, physical violence, the propensity for violence. At the end of the day, what gives a police officer authority over you? You're driving down the road and cop pulls behind you, flashing lights, tells you to pull over, what gave him that authority? It was the law, right? Okay, great. Continue down that path. Well, I don't accept that authority. Therefore, you have no power over me. Well, you live in the United States, therefore you need to accept that. No, I don't accept that authority. So what's the next level that that police officer has to escalate to, to force you to comply? violence. The police officer is authorized to use force when necessary to enforce the law. That is what gives him authority. It's not the law that gives him authority. It's the fact that he's allowed to enforce through violence. He can grab you and pull you out of that car, arrest you against your will, and do it without repercussion. The bottom line of power is violence, physical strength. And so the question that was asked is, well, what gave men the authority over women? 
quite frankly, our ability to impose our power against the will of others. Violence. We have not always lived in a civilization with morals and ethics that existed that prevented men from going out and imposing their will against weaker people. It's strong men, leaders, masculinity that created that system. It was not women who created that system. It was men who created that system, empowering weaker, less powerful beings and giving them a voice. Understand that masculinity is not what's toxic here. It's lack of masculinity. A masculine man, his job is to protect and preserve those who do not have a physical propensity for violence or power. He takes a personal responsibility to keep those within his realm safe from those who want to do ill will upon them. A masculine man is going to be willing to assume the responsibility without expecting the authority. He understands that the authority is given to him by course of respect, but he's still going to do the right thing and assume responsibility. But a good and strong masculine man also recognizes that the way that he respects himself is through boundaries. And so it's completely acceptable for him to say, hey, I am willing to assume this responsibility. I want to assume this responsibility. I recognize that this responsibility is mine to own. But if you choose not to respect me, then I will no longer assume that and I will walk away. And that kind of leads into the last question that I've been getting a lot of from men is, well, what do I do if I try to take the lead and she doesn't follow? Well, that's okay. Then she's not the woman that you need to be taking responsibility over. A good woman who's worth having in your home, you won't have to ask to follow you. You will not have to ask her to submit to the authority because she's going to come into your life and she's going to see that you're already by default assuming the responsibilities that a man should assume. And those pieces will fall into place naturally and she'll choose to follow you. A good woman is going to not only choose to follow her husband because he's assumed those responsibilities, but she's also going to hold him accountable to those commitments. She's going to encourage him to continue to push the envelope with his legacy and status so that he can grow and improve and get better. She's going to lift that man up and she's going to be his biggest supporter and empower him to be even better, stronger, and more capable because she understands that the more powerful her husband is, the more powerful she is by proxy. And this relationship that exists is not authoritarian in any way. This is consensual. A good man takes responsibility and ownership over his family and leads from a place of power and confidence and integrity. And a good woman respects that so much that she's willing to submit to his authority because she trusts that that man is leading her and her children in the direction that she ultimately wants to go. So understand, men, this concept of traditional masculinity and authority and responsibility in the home that I've talked about is a double-edged sword. And you can't be the man that goes out into the world and expects all of the authority and the respect and the status that comes with being that masculine man, with being the head of the table, with providing and protecting your family, if you're not doing the job and taking ownership of it. And women, you can't go out into the world and expect that type of man, but be unwilling to completely submit to him in every way. It goes both ways. So anyway, I hope this cleared some things up. And for context, I'm just going to throw this tidbit out here. The concept that I learned this from, where I was able to articulate it in the way that I did, came from Andrew Tate. And so now that you've heard me speak on the subject in the way that I have, I can almost guarantee you that you're like, wow, this makes a lot of sense. I get it now. Whether you're on either side of the fence, and if you're the type of person who doesn't really care much for Andrew Tate, understand that most of his views on masculinity are spot on, 
The only problem is just like mine sometimes is the delivery doesn't come off the way that it should. It's important sometimes for you to read through the lines and set your ego aside. And most importantly, understand that your triggers are your own to manage. If someone says something that offends you or hurts your feelings or triggers you, it's not their fault. That's your fault to learn that the world shouldn't have to tiptoe around you and your feelings. The ultimate degree of arrogance and narcissism is thinking that you can walk around through the world and everyone else is expected to cater to your needs, your whims, your wants, and your triggers. You need to learn how to police your own emotions. And just because someone delivers something in a way that you may not necessarily agree with doesn't mean that the message that they're delivering isn't right. And so this isn't me jumping on the Andrew Tate bandwagon trying to get a high five or a praise. This is just me helping you to understand that not all things that you see on the internet and out there on social media are what they seem. It's important to learn to make your own decisions and, and come up with your own conclusions based upon the information that you gather and your own critical thinking rather than just believing what you see or hear being regurgitated by other people on the internet. So hopefully this video was valuable for you. If you don't know me, my name is Josh Holyfield and this is the Josh Holyfield podcast. I've actually made the commitment to recording these videos for you every single day to help you improve as a man in every way possible. We talk about health, mental health, fitness, relationships, masculinity, and making money. So if you haven't already, do me a favor, hit that subscribe button. But most importantly, if you feel like this video could potentially help someone that you know, share it to them. And I will see you tomorrow. Stay vigilant.